This is now section yeah. two of your report, which is diet optimization genes. And yeah, now there, there are a whole bunch of, of things. Right. Listed here. <laughs> Thankfully, you don't have too much heart disease risk too, by the way. There's literally like, you know, potentially probably at least 100 genes involved in heart disease risk. And there are all mm -hmm. these different categories. So that's another one I want to bring up before we go to leaky gut, actually, just like the brain where people, they write these books or the, you know, and they just, they just kind of, uh, you know, globalize everything and say, look, here's the way to fix Alzheimer's, right? Mm -hmm. Just do ketosis or whatever. And it's like, well, maybe, but what if you've got high heavy metals, you know, like what if, whatever, there's all these different categories that they're, they're kind of ignoring or they're just yeah. not aware of or whatever. And heart disease is similar where you get books, just focus on lectins, right? Right. And yeah, for like 10% of people, man, that's a phenomenal way to protect your arteries because there are genes that are sensitive to inflammation from lectins. Okay. They're even called like mannose binding lectin and things like that, like ML, MBL and things like MBL2 and things like that. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't have any of these, but I want to bring it up because a lot of people have these, right? And so that's a phenomenal way to protect your arteries if you've got those genes, but then other people it's related to hyaluronic acid or flavonoids or, mm -hmm. you know, high iron. Like there's a gene called superoxide dismutase number two mm -hmm. SOD two. If you've got that gene, it gives you a 10 fold higher risk for heart disease, basically plaques in your arteries. If you've got high iron. Wow. And if you don't have high iron, there's really no risk. So like, that's so interesting. These people that are just pounding the liver, Right. Because, yeah. because they're told that's a healthy thing to do, but they have that gene. And again, you don't, by the way, just so you know, but perfect, but like a tenfold higher risk for heart disease is crazy because literally like a third of people are getting heart attacks you yeah. know, like in America. It's and so insane. if you want to add tenfold on top of that, I mean, it's outrageous how high your risk is. Yeah. And in those people, like I would go to Joseph Mercola because I think he, ha he has that gene. He talks about it. Okay. And, and he's written like three or four articles on optimal levels of iron because the medical reference ranges are pretty crappy. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. You normal, do recommend Mercola after the last podcast too. Yeah. Yeah. I do pretty regular. Like there's, there, he's got great info on iron specifically because again, he's done more research than I have. So it's not like I'm because there's different ways. There's transferritin or there's ferritin, there's transferritin. There's all these different ways to measure iron. Mm -hmm. And Again, thankfully, you don't have that gene. I wanted to bring it up as an example because a lot of people do. And, yeah, you know, there's, like I say, there's books on this stuff, but the books, they exclusively focus just on the one gene, or, right. you know, or, or maybe not one gene, but one category of like where heart disease is coming from and everybody should go on this diet that's lectin free or right, whatever. Right. And, well, like you said, my, my way is the best way. It, it tends to look yeah. like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a really strong example. Now, thankfully, the main risk you've got is from triglycerides. If, you're high, if your triglycerides are high, you do have a heart disease risk, but I doubt they're high, to be no, honest. No, they're just, quite low, yeah. If you have it, if you, if you have it available, you could probably just throw the number out there. I do. Yeah, I can anyway. check that right now. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe they're 50. Well, 83, so not in the 83? 70s. Oh, yeah. that's close. Well, I mean, as long as it's below 125, there's literally right. people that are like 500s, you know, in these yeah. medical trials where they're like testing drugs to lower triglycerides, which is hilarious because it's so easy to lower triglycerides. If you're at the 500s, that's absurd. Yeah. It just tells me you're just sitting around eating Cheetos all day on your couch. I mean, basically exercise is one of the most important ways to lower triglycerides because mm -hmm. you're flushing your blood through your liver and allowing your liver to clear them out. So okay. if you're just totally not moving your body at all, <laughs> you know, then, then your triglycerides are sky high. And it's like, well, don't take a drug. Like maybe, maybe in the interim you need to take a drug because it's super dangerous to be that high. But mm -hmm. let's be honest, like you just need to stop eating garbage and get like, moving. That's just that you're doing everything wrong at that point. But yeah. So for you, I'm not worried at all about that. Um, well, I wanted to check with you on this be too, because time. this has been like my obsession lately has been this lean mass hyper responder thing. I mentioned it to yeah. you briefly in the, in the last podcast. Um, so I would be what's called just a textbook lean oh, mass hyper responder. Right. That's right. Yeah, your, 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 your actual LDL was what, like three, 400? Oh, it's off the charts, man. Let me see. I'm, I just lost, when did that just go? I forgot about that. I should have looked into that more carefully. I mean, interestingly, you don't really have the genes for that. So that's more of an epigenetic thing. Okay. 
Um, well, what I'm blown away by right now is like all of my dad's uncles died of heart attacks. Like his brothers right. have had widowmaker heart attacks and all this stuff. So my dad and I have been really concerned about this. Like I want to get a calcium score done and just see, see what that is. Um, but this, right. this mass hyperresponder thing, uh, again, these, these individuals like variants between individuals. I was talking to Rob Wolf about this the other day um, because he shared an article with me uh, about LDL appearing the, the higher LDL levels appearing to be positively associated Protective. with lifespan. Right. Yes, it is. Exactly. It is. I'm a huge, I'm a huge proponent of that. I mean, people are literally so dogmatic in science. I mean, I did my PhD on cholesterol, right? On hormones okay. and cholesterol, like LDL is one of my specialties. Mm -hmm. And it's so hilarious to read these scientific studies where you, you decrease your LDL. So they just automatically assume that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then they say like, it's a great supplement or it's a great thing to do because it decreased LDL. And it's like, yeah, but <laughs> there's no, like the evidence for that is really, it's not even true. It's not, it's not true at well, all. Well, the other like, thing is, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this whole lean mass hyperresponder thing, it's like, could LDL be a problem? Well, maybe if you're insulin resistant or like your LP little a is off the charts or all these or systemic inflammation. Like that's the thing. If I'm looking at C reactive protein is like untraceable, <laughs> right. basically untraceable, low triglycerides, low body fat percentage. Right. Yeah. Well, you know? for you looking at your genes, I'm not really that worried about the LDL. What I am worried about is your leaky gut. So that's yes. where you would get the inflammation, right? Like for you, your family members probably had a lot of inflammation from all these leaky gut. They probably have a lot of these sim similar leaky gut genes. Sure. And then once your gut's leaking or inflamed and all of this, then those inflammatory chemicals are going, you know, into your arteries. Now, again, for you, you're testing those chemicals, you're finding they're blank, you're eating healthy, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously a lot of your extended family probably isn't because that's true. Of pretty much everybody's extended family. And, and that's where the what heart really disease risk tricky. is connected. Mm -hmm. What was scary here is like, I'll give you an example. My dad's older brother had a widowmaker heart attack. The only reason he survived was because he had the widowmaker inside an ambulance. Like wow. it happened yeah. in the ambulance because right. he was having these chest pains. But this is literally someone who was running like six miles a day, starting every day with breakfast was like oatmeal with sliced bananas on it. Like he was basically doing textbook American Heart Association diet, right. Right. you know? Right. Yeah, man. I mean, and, I just posted on Instagram a few days ago or a week ago or something, the study 2019, it's called total cholesterol and all cause mortality by sex and age perspective cohort study among 12 million adults. Yeah. And they show, you probably saw this, but basically once you started to get below 200 on your total cholesterol, there's actually a lot higher hazard ratio. It just goes way up. It's, it's a, it's what's called a bell curve or it's like a U shape. The U shape, right. But what's funny is like the U is a lot higher, like it's a lot riskier to have low cholesterol than it is to have high cholesterol in terms of like all these disease risks. Yeah. Um, at least in terms of all cause mortality, it's like kind of a, a lopsided U because the low cholesterol was far worse than the high cholesterol. Than the high cholesterol. And, it, and it took really high cholesterol to even creep up the, the curve a little bit. But there is an optimal range for sure. And people should look at that. Well, see, I'm glad you've gone here because because I wanted to pick your brain about. I remember your Instagram post and was like, I need to talk to him about this. I'm so glad you brought that up. This U-shaped curve is really what's tripping me out, and this is what I was talking to Rob about as well. Is mm -hmm. I, I want to say this out loud and share this to give people an example because people come to me and they're like, my cholesterol is 220, and my doctor wants to put me on a oh, statin. Yeah, yeah, so, they do too. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's nuts. That's crazy. So right? for if, all, if if you get above 350 total cholesterol, then I do get a little bit worried in general, just so you know. Okay. And so that's what I want to share with you here because the people, Clovis people who are listening, if you're at 200 cholesterol and your doctor wants to put you on a statin. Absurd. So it's absurd. Yeah. my total cholesterol is 545. Yeah. And yeah. my LDLP, which is my LDL particle number is it, it's literally out of reference range. It just says greater than 3,500. So, right. I mean, it's just right. staggeringly high. Yeah. I'd, I mean, I would definitely do the calcium CT. <laughs> Right. Okay. And you're doing all the right stuff in terms of checking inflammation. Like you can have outrageously high cholesterol and have no issues if your inflammation is just like spot crystal clean. Right. right? But there, the problem is there's a lot of forms of inflammation. Like one of them is called CDK. Right. And you've got one of these leaky gut genes, CDKAL1. Okay. 
Um, and CDK, it's like, I always use the analogy of hot water. Like if you got your hot water turned on too high, you know, you got too much inflammation, you got to turn that hot water down. Mm -hmm. And the CDK genes that people have, there's a lot of them. They help to turn that hot water down. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the problem is you've got one of these genes where you don't turn the hot water down as much as you should, but there's actually flavonoids in plants that will basically do it for you, right? They shut off that form of inflammation. Okay. And so flavonoids are really important. Um, but there's other forms of inflammation like interferons, you know, there's interleukins, there's a whole bunch of interleukins. Right. Um, like nobody's checking interleukin 23. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. Like you'll never get a blood test and the doctor be like, well, let's check your interleukin 23, right? Because there's so many other ones and they're all different forms of inflammation. So it, it can be a bit of a crapshoot. Okay. And, and so I agree with you to check, you know, the calcium CT scan. Okay. I've seen people totally reverse that and go down to zero with a really high scan if they do the right thing. Usually when we look at their DNA, mm. we can figure that out. Um, but so I, I, I do get nervous. Head. I'm not kidding. Like I, I, I don't want to like, you know, like uh, water it down. I do get nervous when it gets above 350. Yeah, I, I want to know this. You know for sure. Yeah, and and saturated fat definitely increases LDL, like cholesterol. There's no question. Um, so that is the thing here, man. Is is this this blood work? Just you know, full transparency. This blood work was done by Paul Saladino. And this was after a six week strict carnivore experiment. Yep. I didn't even do black coffee. I mean, and it, it was, it was virtually a 100% red meat, liver and egg diet. Yeah. And I've never seen my numbers this high. Yeah, I drop it. I mean, I would, I, I want to see people below 350 and I don't okay. want them using statins to do it. And right. I, you don't, you don't need to generally like, to be honest, the vegan diet is phenomenal at lowering LDL. Usually it lowers it way too much. And then people think they're phenomenal. I was just actually one of the special operators in the military I was talking to, we were looking at his blood work and, uh, cause I spent the whole day there, you know, on this secretive air force <laughs> base or, or <laughs> yeah. this, this military base. And, and, uh, and I actually had to sign paperwork saying like, you know, I'm not going to publicize it on social media and all this kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Well. And, but anyways, um, his cholesterol was just way, 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 way too low, you know, for performance. And, mm -hmm. and of course his doctors were basically giving him high fives for it. And I'm like, man, yeah. dude, this is, this is not optimal at all. And you could tell, like he, he could feel it. Like his sex hormones were starting to go down. It was so yeah. low, things like that. And, and, it, you know, I would, I want to see you at 200, you know, I want to see you at 220, 250, to be honest. Okay. And I don't want to see you too getting too low you know, below that. Right. But I don't want to see above 350 either. Right. Right. Um, because then it's, it's touch and go whether, like I say, there's so many forms of inflammation. It's really a complicated topic. Yeah. Um, yeah, like for example, there's, there's some genes called HLA, HLA DQA1 mm -hmm. or HLA DRB9 and all these HLA genes. And they are another form of inflammation, but it's triggered by high insulin which okay. I'm not worried about in your case, right? I mean, right. what's your blood, your blood sugar is like 80, if I had to guess, probably 85. Glucose, uh, 91. 91. Okay. And that was fasted mm -hmm. or after coffee, probably. You probably oh, no, that coffee. was fasted. No call. I, I did this hundred oh, percent. fasted. Okay. Far fast. Yeah. Yeah. So you might want to bring that down a little bit. If I was you, I'd take zinc. I don't know if you're supplementing zinc at all. No, I'm not. But you did have a zinc transporter gene issue. Like scroll up a little bit on the DNA report and on page four, you'll see right in the middle, there's type two diabetes risk for zinc. Yes. SLC. Um, and I noticed you put priority there. Yeah. Supplementing zinc is a priority for you because basically, I mean, you can get enough from red meat, but you got to eat a shit ton of red meat. Okay. It's probably better just to take a zinc supplement and not worry about, oh, did I get 200 grams of red meat or whatever? Right. Um, because it's good for your hormones also, your testosterone and things. Great. Um, that'll actually help with your blood sugar. Okay. Um, you know, nitric oxide will too, by the way, just looking at the gene above that. But I think zinc, you know, you're right on the border. I think you're good there. It's not, it's not concerning. It's, you know, it's easy to drop a couple points. See, and this goes back to, I heard this too in, in Dave Feldman's uh, lean mass hyperresponder group where people seem to have the same exact thing that I do where this, um, particularly people that are in any, in any way, shape or form gearing towards the carnivore thing, their fasted blood glucose seems to be a little bit 
elevated. It is. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing this on carnivore, for sure, because your body is what you're doing. And I just wanted to check your metformin gene, mm -hmm. um, which I can bring up in a second. But what you're doing with carnivore is you're basically teaching your body to convert protein to sugar. Right. Because that's what's going to happen, right? You're not going to convert protein to fat because you can't. Yeah. So, I mean, these high protein, these really high protein diets, you basically upregulate your body's enzymes to convert the, the, the amino acids into carbs. Gotcha. And so it does bump up your carbs, right? I mean, that's just the way your body works. Um, but it's not, I mean, 91 is definitely good. Like I'll bet if you checked it tomorrow, you'd be 89, you know, you check the next day, you'd be, you know, 87, you know, like yeah, it kind of bounces yeah. around. Absolutely. It's one of those things. Um, but I'd probably drop it a little bit. Like I say, take some zinc, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's and, great. And I love that we're piecing some of the, putting some of these dots together, connecting them because this lean mass hyper responder thing. Um, so again, I've been just obsessed with this. I'm like, is this like, am I protecting myself? What's going to happen with this cholesterol stuff? And obviously with my family history, I'm, I'm really concerned. And um, another thing that Rob said was, you know, it's Rob Wolf. So he has all these wonderful connections with really smart people. And he was like, I was talking to some people who really know their shit and they are suggesting that lean mass hyper responder could be low level hypothyroidism. So I went and looked at my blood work and sure enough, my T3 is low. And he's yeah, like, that's exactly what would be low in this scenario. Yeah. Yeah. And that's genetic. I mean, like I know we keep looking at the leaky gut, like we're going to talk about it and then we bounce away from it, but let's do that. Let's bounce away from it for a second and go all the way down to your thyroid section, which a lot of people are blank in this category. They've got nothing going on here. You've got one, two, three, four, five gene issues in the thyroid section. Wow. Right? One of them is reduced conversion of T4 to T3, by the way. So you're not, you know, you're probably not converting a lot of T4 into T3. Makes sense. But definitely take iodine. I mean, that's the fu the fundamental point with all of these is um, if you're not like iodine is a building block for the thyroid hormones. If you're not getting enough iodine, then you can't make enough thyroid hormones, and you're definitely going to be at a problem. Okay. In the problem situation, because with all of these genes, right? I mean, <laughs> you're 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 genetically just set up. That's really interesting. You should try that experiment. Yeah. Um, try getting your thyroid hormones up if you have to take you know, armor thyroid or T straight up T3 or something, but you got to work with a doctor on that. Cause you don't want right. to, too, if you go too high, you get your heart all screwed up, you know? Okay. Sometimes permanently you go into AFib permanently. Wow. So you gotta be, you don't want to be like, Oh, let's just take two grams of <laughs> this thyroid med or whatever. Like just right. take loads. Of stuff. You want to ease into that really carefully. Even if the doctors say like, here's how much you should take. Like I would start with like a fourth of that and kind of ease into it. Okay. Um, okay. Potentially, but Again, definitely work with somebody who's good on that. And yeah, I only tend to work with doctors like you or Paul yeah, or true, like just true. guys that I 100% trust. Yeah, true. That's that's huge. That's valuable. Um, the other thing is intermittent fasting really helps with your thyroid. In your case, you've got these genes called Fox E1. I call mm -hmm. it like usually just call it Foxy One, like Foxy Lady. Yeah. Um, and F O X E1, Foxy One is um, they discovered it in Chernobyl, like the radiation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, accident because people that had thyroid issues or they had radiation exposure and they damaged the thyroid, the people that healed up fine had the good version of this gene. And the people that really struggled to heal, they had the bad version of this gene, like you've kind of got here. Mm -hmm. And it's related to autophagy in your thyroid gland. So mm -hmm. basically you're not taking your cells in your thyroid, aren't taking out the trash as well as they should. They're not clearing the garbage. And the best way to increase autophagy, the best way to teach those, get those cells taken out the trash is intermittent fast, right? okay. like just noon to six or something like that. Sure, sure. Um, like only eat, eating between noon and six. And of course, like I say, you throw iodine in the mix and you'll probably bump your T3 up sufficiently okay. to be good. And then it'll be interesting to see how your LDL responds to that. Yeah, yeah. That could be really cool. And if you have to, like I say, I'm, I'm not opposed at all to just pulling the pulling out the vegan diet for a month, you know, just to really shoot your cholesterol down. <laughs> right, like, right. Like it's a tool in a toolkit, you know, and I'm, I'm yeah, not a fan at all of using it long-term right. for virtually anybody, but a short-term strategy to lower LDL, it's pretty phenomenal.